Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Turn to your neighbor so you got it. If you didn't get it. <laughs> we still have some newsletters. Word for 2018. If you haven't gotten one, make sure you get one. It's important to know where we are. How many of y'all know things are happening? Amen. Everywhere. Globally. Amen? Globally. Welcome to Tuesday night training session. We don't do Bible studies. It's training. Amen? We're all in a war. Everybody's got battles to go through. And we are soldiers of the Most High. Praise God. So we're going to start off with something. We're going to make a declaration by Psalm 91 or Psalm 71, if you'll go there with me. 71, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 71. Everybody there? Remember, what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Confession brings possession. Amen? That's why it's important when you're praising and worship, don't get lost. Keep singing. Because the only way to get healed or the only way to get delivered is to sow in the Spirit. Amen? Too many people get caught up in themselves. They're looking for how they ought to feel. Get your eyes off of you. Worship. Amen? Glory. And dance until you drop. Look at the most of you go out and shop until you drop, right? Why not dance till you drop? <laughs> Glory. Psalm 71, let's speak it. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to what? Escape. How many of you know God's trying to always make a way of escape for us? When we listen, you know. Sometimes, well, yeah, I'll do that later. Yeah. Then we get hit by a truck, you know. Okay. Well, I should have. We got out of the way. God's always trying to make a way of escape for me and you. Every day. Why? Because Satan's greatest weapon is deception. The whole world is deceived. Remember, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Everything is operated by Satan's kingdom. God owns the planet. Satan runs it. Hello? We are the only resistance. The whole planet is disconnected from the, God's presence. The only way God's presence is connected here is through me and you. Amen? And too many people are disconnected from God's presence. Especially those so-called Christians. Are, a lot of them are disconnected from God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, let's go a little further here. So, he says, incline your what? Ear to me and what? Save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man, for you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust for my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I have become a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. In other words, this is a, a declaration for your life, your destiny, and a reward of the wicked. Watch, let's go a little further. Is everybody there? Yeah. Verse 9. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel. Saying what? God has forsaken. Have you ever heard that a voice come to you and say, the Lord's forsaken you? It's the voice of a stranger. God is no longer going to help you. And you're the only one. That's the devil's voice. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Oh, man. 
I get a lot of calls. Lord, uh, Pastor, I'm struggling. I tell them, who told you that? <laughs> Most of the time, people don't even know what they're struggling with. I don't even know what I'm struggling with. I'm just struggling. Well, who told you you're struggling? Pull the sword out. I know. And the shield. Hit him with both. Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. <laughs> uh, verse uh, 12. Oh, God, do not be far from me. Oh, my God, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and consumed who are adversaries of my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. But I will hope continually, and I will praise you yet more and more. Well, he's not led by how he feels, does he? Amen. He said, I'm going to praise you even more. But I will hope continually he said i'll praise you continually and i'll hope continually and i'll praise you even more verse 15 my mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day for i did not know their limits i will go in the strength of the lord and i will make mention of your righteousness of yours only so again this is a declaration you are proclaiming this for your life and your destiny amen it's sealed in the name of Jesus. Now, this is important because what we're getting ready to get into is pretty intense. So tonight's topic is called the bottomless pit. And there's a lot of things attached to a bottomless pit. There's even another race in the bottomless pit most people don't even know about. In Proverbs 12. In verse 1, we'll speak the first six verses. Whoever loves what? Instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. Well, that settled that. <laughs> a good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. Now, are you ready for this? Watch this. The words of the wicked are lie and wait for what? Blood. Lie and wait for blood. But the mouth of the upright will what? Deliver him. There's a reason why they lie and wait for blood. The word says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. So we got to see something here. The wicked lie and wait for blood. What does that mean? Violence, murder, torture, killing. Anything to shed blood for them opens dimensional ports. It opens not only dimensional ports. It's this large scales of murder and things to that degree. But it also rewards them with fame and fortune in this realm. Unfortunately, what's waiting for them in the next realm is called hell and fire. It awaits them. Now, I want to explain something. This is where we're at right now. You see more. People don't realize that. That's why Jesus came and gave his blood for me and you. He manifested his own pure blood for the price so that sins could be cleansed and removed but the enemy thrives on blood Satan's kingdom is to shed blood that's how they maintain their position in power their focus is to shed human blood as much as possible and many individuals must shed blood people have no idea how many people were sacrificed do you know that 300,000 children are missing in this country a year and it's not even barely reported where did they go why do you think there's child porn and uh, child transportations and uh, to other countries and, and and abductions and all kinds of things of that degree because they shed blood they eat humans also I know this sounds weird but that's what they are remember they are evil 
Satan's kingdom is outrageously evil. You don't see this out in front, but they do symbols out in front to mock us. When you begin to look at all of the things in the movies and everything else, everything is about this. Where do you think all of these shootings are in the schools? You don't think the FBI knew all of these things? You don't think that the uh, Twin Towers and all of these things could have been prevented? They were not prevented because blood had to be shed. Why? Who's the ruler of this earth? Satan in his kingdom. We are the only resistance, and we are the ones who are exposed to these things. Amen? Go to John chapter 8. It's not guns that kill people, it's shooters. A gun sits there and does nothing until a human picks it up or a demon-possessed individual. And remember the devil, that Satan's kingdom wants to disarm this country. That's his focus. Why? So then he can take over. Remember, they don't want borders. They don't want walls. They, don't, they want open borders. Why? Because it's one world order. They are not interested in saving this country. They want to demolish this country. This country is a threat to Satan's kingdom. Same thing with Israel. These are the two major countries that are a threat to Satan's kingdom. In fact, the word principalities is, means associated with government. Remember, they want to control people. There's mind control. That's how deception is established, through music, through videos, through TV, even through our education system. Why do you think they got prayer out of schools? Ever since then, there's been more murders. They're trying to get God out of society. They're trying to remove God out of everything. That's why they took down the Ten Commandments. Why? So that people couldn't get convicted of sin. In verse 37. John 8, 37. Let's speak it. Jesus is speaking. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. Now he's talking about two different fathers. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, oh, really? If you were Abraham children, you would do the works of Abraham. But, you, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. And Jesus said to him, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but I, he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the what? The devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. What's the first thing he says? He was a what? Murderer. Bloodshedder. From the beginning. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. So he's a liar also. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe. Believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you are not, you do not hear because you are not of God. This is powerful. Now, he expresses two different fathers. He's expressing actually two different seeds, two different races. A liar is associated with deception, deceiver. He says, you're a murderer. It's one that... Sheds a lot of blood. It's human blood. That's why we have wars, there's murders, massacres. Remember what happened in L.A.? You don't think they could have stopped that? Of course they could have. Or Las Vegas? Yeah, Las Vegas. Where they were just shot, people just picked off. They could have stopped all of that. They knew everything about it. 
Why? Because you've got another world in this world. It's an underground world that has infiltrated all areas. Remember, Satan's kingdom rules the earth. So they're in all areas. They're in the FBI, CIA. They're in all areas. In fact, they had a 16-year agenda to totally destroy this place. First eight years with Obama, and then the second eight years would have been with Clinton. But God did a divine intervention. Oh, hallelujah. Look at what goes on in, remember, the Orlando nightclub massacre. That could have been prevented. They knew all of these things ahead of time. Don't let the main street media fool you. This is bloodshed for Satan's kingdom. The Boston Marathon. You remember, look at it in the Middle East how much murders. Look at all the suicide bombers there. They think they're dying for God. And they're waking up in hell. Some of them need to come back and tell somebody. Hallelujah. The Middle East. All for wickedness. To maintain a service to their king. <laughs> a position of fame and fortune. Again, the FBI knew all what was going on and could have stopped them, but they didn't because that's a deep state and that steep, deep state regime is ruled by Satan's kingdom. Look at how much abortion is going on in this country. This country kills more children besides China. They do too. You know, at one time this, there was a Doom and gloom prophecies until people began to pray because this country is headed for destruction. And God answered the prayer of his people. And he put a servant, a common man that loves this country. And now he knows God. He loves God. He's from God. God sent him in to turn things around. Now things are beginning to turn around. Because the word says, if my people will hum them, humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, I'll heal their land. So now we've entered a time of plenty. We have entered, I truly believe, seven years of plenty before seven years of famine. Now who knows if it can get cut short at any time. But that's why you're going to see things change. And things are changing already. But there's something I want to share with you. There was a, a tremendous, tremendous Destruction to this country is called 9-11. Twin Towers. It was symbolic. Almost 3,000 people died there instantly. And then the aftermath of deaths was tremendous also. Almost 1,200 people, something like that, died afterwards from toxics that were there, cancers. There's something like, I forgot, uh, so many uh, um, uh, people that were uh, miscarriages afterwards. All kinds of things. It, it continued to spread. So there was a tremendous amount of bloodshed. Amen? Now, there is symbolic. There's numer numerology in certain areas. And I want you to understand that biblical, biblical numbers mean things. Amen? Okay. Now, uh, think about, um, look at the Holocaust. How many millions of Jews died? How much blood was shed? You know? Well, 9-11 was... Uh, uh, a tremendous effect in this country. Could have been stopped? Yes. Yeah, it could have been. But it wasn't. It was set forth. In fact, the number nine means judgment. And the Bible says that the ruler of this earth has been judged. And 11 means chaos and disorder. So on 9-11, there was not only a judgment, but it was chaos and disorder. And the Twin Towers were very symbolic in every area. Go to Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Bottomless pit, we're going to get there. In Revelation 9, starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. 
and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts, locusts came upon the earth. And then, and, th and to them was given power as to the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to what? Torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces are like the faces of men. This is a race of locusts. This is another race of demonic forces that will be released from the bottomless pit and come onto the earth. They have hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek, he has the name of Apollyon. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. The angel was not in the bottomless pit. Amen. The angel came down with a key to open the bottomless pit because they were his servants. Apollyon is Satan. Somebody get it? And he will take possession of a body that is already here, a person waiting for him so that he can possess him and become the Antichrist here. Is everybody okay? Okay, 9-11. If you look, where, where is it? 9-11. And they had a what? King over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. Do you see the numerology with this? Whose name was what? Abaddon or Apollyon. Now, Again, the angel is not in the bottomless pit. He's the angel of the bottomless pit who Satan causes judgment and he causes chaos. There's a race of locusts that have been re reserved because of the Bible says that the wicked will slay the wicked. He's, Jesus again said, I saw Satan fall from heaven to earth. Like lightning, a body will be prepared for him to possess as the Antichrist for 42 months, a number of Satan's complete reign. That will also, you see, through the Bible. Go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13, starting at verse 1. Now, when you see the word beast, it's a representation of fallen angels. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast risen up of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and his, on his heads a blasphemous word, name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like a feet of bear. His mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Now, I want you to understand also, beasts are associated with kings and nations, too. I'm not going to go into all of this deep or anything. I just want to skim over some of this because there are certain other things I want to get to. In verse 4, so they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast who is able to make war with him? 
And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for how many months? 42 months. Who are they talking about? Satan and his reign. He is known also as a beast. He is a fallen angel. The fallen angel. <laughs> the number one. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemous against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Now you've got to remember something that God is the one who releases authority. He uses the devil to bring judgment. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. And he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Again, 42 months of Satan's reign, full reign, used by God. It'll be a time of strong delusion. Again, I believe fully that this will happen after the rapture. Does everybody understand? Because many people, there'll be people who become, who will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior after the rapture. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> There's going to be a many. In fact, the, the rapture will be the last sign to everyone before all hell will break out. In Genesis chapter 11, Genesis 11, we'll go 1 through 9. Hallelujah. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, which is actually Iraq. And they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and make them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they shall have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore the name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Now, this is something powerful because here you are at, let's go to 9 or 11, 9 again. It says, this place is called Babel. This was another tower. In fact, this tower of Babel was a place they called also Babylon. The king of this tower was called Nimrod. He was also what we call a Nephilim. In other words, the bloodline of Satan's seed. He was large. He was a hunter. We'll talk a little bit about him. It was the Tower of Babel. And Nimrod was also a giant. He was very large. He was known as a great hunter. Unfortunately, he was a hunter of humans and animals. Now, Ham, one of Noah's sons, was his great, 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 great grandfather. In other words, you have Shem, Japhet, and Ham, who were Noah's sons. Ham, during the flood, married a Nephilim, female Nephilim. So after God destroyed the flood, 
that seed of the Nephilim race of Satan's kingdom came through him. If you follow Ham's lineage all the way down, you got all the Canaanites and everything else, which were all tribes of giants and against God's kingdom. Every single one of them. At that time, Nimrod and the Nephilim race, they were known as false gods and goddesses. Again, Nimrod was a mighty hunter, an animal and human hunter. It says, for the Lord, but it's not for our Lord. It was for the Lord known as Satan. Many people confuse that. You must discern where the fruit of it is, what they're talking about. Is everybody okay? I didn't lose anyone yet. Okay, we're getting, we're building a foundation first. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Now, before we do this scripture, I want you to grab hold of something. On August 9th, um, I think it was uh, before Obama's last year, on August 9th and August 11th, the New York Empire State Building projected a show of lights and images. And if you remember this, it was on the news. It was satanic transmutant images going up and down. In fact, one of the images that kept coming back and coming back was the face of the locust in Revelation. It kept coming up and down. If you get a chance, Google it. You'll see it. There were gods and goddesses, purple, red, and blue, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. This was uh, in August, on, nine, on the 9th of August and the 11th of August, both days, kept coming down. Can you imagine a whole Empire State Building with all these demonic things coming up and down it? What were they celebrating? Remember, the world is ruled by Satan's kingdom. You don't think that they knew what they were doing? Of course they did. In verse 27, is everybody there? Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the what? Seed of man and the what? Seed of a beast. The seed of beast. Does everybody see that? There's two seeds here. The seed of man and the seed of beast. Hmm. And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down, to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grapes his teeth shall be set on edge. So when you eat a grape, what color do your teeth get? Purple. Watch. Please understand, everything is symbolic and released all the time. <laughs> they were celebrating on 9-11, the awakening of the Antichrist. Where the seed of man and the seed of beast will become one. The towers... The two towers, that's why they're called twin towers. You got to remember something. We had the only twin towers in the whole world <laughs> like this. There were financial twin towers. They represented so much. Actually, they represented the seed of man and the seed of the beast. In fact, when it was destroyed... There's something that when I began to rebuild it. Now, I want you to know that the, tw the, tower that, the twin towers that came down, right? Now we have a tower that's up there. It's called the World, One World Freedom Tower. Or freedom, whatever it is. 
One world, in other words, one world order. In fact, on the top floor, there's a satanic logo in the floor. It's a satanic symbol. And when they were building it, Obama went and signed the beam. And he signed something. And on that signature, he placed something very powerful. Now, before I get into that, I want to share that on top of the tower, there is a, uh, a crown like. It's the forces, the evil forces prepared like a crown. I, I forgot what it was called a, a minuet, minu minaret. And actually, it's a, it's a crowning. But so, why? Because they're crowning Apollyon. Does everybody get this? He's known as the king. That's what all 9-11 revolves around. Because they're celebrating the king, their king to come. While we're celebrating our king to come, they're celebrating their king to come. Does everybody get it? Okay. And this king, Apollyon, who will be Satan, who will come forth, and it will take possession of the body that is prepared for him. Now, when Obama... I don't know if I should share this yet. I think I'll wait a minute so that you get a connection here. Remember that they use numeral values and symbols to message their people and mock the world of ignorance because the world doesn't see them. Did you ever hear of somebody saying, uh, uh, hidden in plain sight? Well, because people don't see these things going on. They're blinded to it. They have no idea of all the messages and all the symbolic things and, and all the mockings. And, and then when people pick up the so little, little messages and things to that degree, and they don't even realize it. So the tower was a representation of good, the twin towers, and evil that come down. Now it was a representation of union. It's called a twin system. Everyone say twin system. Go to Genesis 3. We'll talk more about it. So the towers didn't represent righteousness. They represented good and evil. Amen? Genesis chapter 3. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than what? Any beast. He was more cunning than the rest of the fallen angels. <laughs> of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And a woman said to the serpent, we may eat the, tree of the, fr tr the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they knew righteousness, and they already were like God. They were his offspring. And the woman saw that the tree was what? Good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree um, desirable to make what? One wise. And she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then both of them were, the, both of their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. In other words, what had happened, they actually became blinded to the spirit realm. At that, mo at that time, they were talking they were able to talk to God. It says that the Lord walked with them and all kinds of things. And, and, and because of what occurred prior, Adam was now ruler of the earth. Amen? So because Adam was ruler of the earth, Satan had to serve Adam. That's why he was in the garden. Does everybody get this? He wasn't too happy. So what his purpose was is to try and take back to the office, 
so that Satan would now rule the earth again. Why did Satan, why would he want to rule? Well, first of all, he was the praise and worshiper of the universe. He was on the earth, and the, angel, and the earth was inhabited with angels. And so in this, when, when Satan rebelled against God, and you can hear it in the last teaching we just did, God removed him because he said, I'll be like God. So God shut down the earth. Remember, the earth was perfect, then chaotic. Amen? Then it was restored, which uh, we're in a restored, but not, it's ruled by Satan's kingdom again. Okay, let's go a little bit further here. Now, again, it's known as the tree of knowledge and good and evil, right? Since when does a tree of knowledge? I want you to understand this is symbolic. The word says something that you'll know them by their fruit. So was there actually trees in the garden or were they were spirits? Spirits. Does everybody get it? Jesus was the tree of life. He was the one that was giving them life. Satan was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, representing also in, to, in today's time the two towers. Does everybody get it? So, that's what the, because that's what the seed brings. So in this, he's talking about spirits. A tree with good and, good and evil knowledge. With, he was known as Satan, the serpent, the beast, the fallen angel. And what did he do? Remember, there were twin towers. He seduced Eve. Does everybody understand this? All right. She became pregnant with twins. Good and evil one. Good and evil one. Believe me, dude, she didn't eat an apple and give part of it to her husband, and they went, boom, oh. I'm sorry, it wasn't like that. That's Sunday school stories. They threw me out of every one of them, so I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, so you got, so she got pregnant. She had Cain and Abel, right? Cain murdered Abel, right? Well, who's the father of murder? Hello, Adam wasn't. Okay, so Cain murders Abel like his father. Now, Cain's children were Nephilims. They were offsprings. Cain's family line became giants, cannibalistic, eating one another and everything else. And then Satan sent in 200 angels that put on flesh. Is everybody okay? Remember, how did Satan have access to the garden? Because he was a servant to Adam and all the other fallen angels and so forth. So, once Adam fell, everything changed and everybody became born with good and evil. evil. Twin system. Prior to the fall, it wasn't that way. Changed everything. Is everybody okay? That's why you and I must be born again. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can tell, you know, you, remember when you were a kid? Did somebody ever call you, your little devil? <laughs> they weren't kidding. <laughs> you little devil. Go to Genesis 6. Genesis 6 and verse 1. Is everybody okay? Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Sons of God at that time were known as angels. Okay? And they saw the women... Most of these women were natural, normal women. They weren't Nephilims. That they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves and all whom they chose. They took them. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his day shall be 120 years. There were what? Giants, 
on the earth in those days. And it says, and also afterward. Why? Okay, after what? Watch this. When the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old and men of renown. This is where you get your gods and goddesses and your Zeus and all the other stuff. But prior, okay, again, you had Cain. That was the first one, the first offspring of the seed of the serpent. His whole family line produced giants. That's why he says there were giants on the earth in those days. And then you had two other, other fallen angels come in and put on flesh. And they began to take women. Now, you got to understand that the whole earth began to become corrupt. This is why God flooded and destroyed everyone. Does everybody get it? And it says that all, let's go a little further, <clears throat> I think. Um, now in verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil when continually the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds in the air of the air. And for I'm sorry that I made man. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And again, Noah's geology was his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham is the one that married a Nephilim female. And that's how it came through after, after the flood. In Genesis chapter 5, in verse 1. Genesis 5, verse 1. And this is the geology of Adam. It says, in the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Who did he make in the likeness of God? Adam. No one else has been made in the likeness of God, not even you and I, until we are born again. We were still in the likeness of good and evil. And God is not good and evil. He's righteous. He created them male and female and blessed them, called them mankind in the earth where they, create, where they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his what? Own likeness. So Abel and Cain were not in his likeness. Only Seth. After his image and his name was what? Seth. Does everybody understand this? So Seth had a lot of daughters and so forth. And that's where a lot of these were taken over to. So you have all of these families and then the giants came in and whatever and the Nephilims and they began to take the fallen angels they began to take everything over. And God said, I'm going to kill everyone. But then Noah and his three sons found favor. So we understand that. Except for Ham married a Nephilim female. God destroyed everything on the earth and then it started all over. That's why David, King David fought a giant, Goliath, and there were giant races and God would send out the military to kill all of them he said kill their children kill everything why because they were the seeds of the serpent is everybody okay praise God all right Genesis three sixteen. I think <laughs> now just to show you this point here when God brought judgment on the woman in verse 16, he said, okay, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your what? Conception. Why? Why would he bring judgment on that? Because of what she did. Does everybody get it? She slept with the serpent. Remember, he didn't look like a serpent, okay? Does everybody understand that? Serpent was a representation. It says that Satan is an angel of light. He's got an inside heart of a serpent, but he still was beautiful. She was enticed by him. Is everybody okay? All right. He said, I'll greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be for your husband and not the serpent. <laughs> and he shall rule over you. See, this was God's judgment. 
to the woman. Of course, in God's judgment to the man, he said, man, you're going to work your butt from now on. <laughs> and that's where we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the judgment was on conception because of the uh, affair with the serpent. And the husband, uh, like the husband said, you will serve your husband. Again, this fell on all females from ever, ever since then. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. I, I really believe, uh, you know, God is trying to bring us up to date on what's happening. So we become more sensitive to the symbols and signs and what's going on. Because we are at a crucial, crucial time. Things are going to get more intense. There's going to be more corruption exposed. You know, there's going to be a lot of things going on. And we can't get swayed and mixed up in them or moved. We've got to stay focused on what God is doing. In verse 19, Genesis 25, verse 19. Is everybody there? This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he begot Rebekah, his wife, the daughter of Bethuel, uh, the Syrian of Pandan, Ar 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 Armin, the sister of Laban, uh, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her. Hmm. And she said, what, uh, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And what happened? And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. In other words, this has come down the line again. Two peoples shall be Separated from your body, good and evil. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. Sound familiar? And the first came out red. She, he was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau, who was also his lineage will become Adamites, which were also a Nephilim seed. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Now, whose else's heel was bruised? Jesus. Does everybody get it? So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she, um, when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a what? Skillful hunter, another skillful hunter, just like who? Nimrod. A man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau. Why did Isaac love Esau? Because he fed him food. Because he ate his game. But Rebecca loved Jacob. I think Isaac got rebuked later. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew. He came out red, and he's looking for red stew. For I am weary. Therefore his name was called Adam, just the Adamites. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. And then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Does everybody understand it? Esau. Wrong seed, beast seed, seed of the serpent. Amen? 
He despised his birthright. Esau, Edomite, it's anti-Christ line of the giants. It's the bloodline of the serpent. Another hunter, he sold his birthright for pleasure, which is still happening now. They're selling their birthrights all over. And then to maintain their position, they must shed blood. So they must cause some kind of damage somewhere along the line where people are killed or someone sacrificed in their own family. How do you think Oprah Winfrey, Wim, not Oprah Winfrey, uh, what's her name? Uh, Whitney Houston died. She was sacrificed. What about Prince? He was sacrificed. In fact, he sacrificed himself. This is called the twin system. The twin system is known as red and blue. Hey, does that sound familiar? Anybody ever watch The Matrix? What pill do you want? Red pill or blue pill? You remember even Obama mentioned the red pill and blue pill. Do you understand? Because they do symbolizing through movies. They, the reason for that is because the Lord has made them proclaim what is going to happen before it happens. Does everybody understand that? They have to do that. Did anybody ever see the information about the money and folding of the money in a satanic logo and it has a message? Okay. Because they have to do these things. Okay. Now, I mean, and if you think about it, um, in, even in the blood, blood that's richly oxi with oxygen is red. Blood that's not richly oxygen begins to turn blue. That's where you get blue blood. Amen? Less oxygen. Now, I want to go to something else. 666, and everybody knows that number. Amen? Okay. The number six is a representation of man. On the sixth day, God created man. But in Satan's kingdom, it's control over all man. It's where Satan's kingdom becomes man, where the Antichrist comes and everything else. It's also known as one world order. It's also associated with one world economy, one world religion, and one world government, where Satan's kingdom rules. In the Hebrew lettering, the number six is known as the word, the letter W. That's why all internet is WWW. Why? Because it's controlled by 666. W is considered the twin system. If you take a W and split it, it becomes two Vs. It's a twin system. That is called five and five, which is ten. This is how their numbers are. You got to understand how they think and how they proclaim and how they express. Do you remember that years ago there was a, uh, a, a series called V? And they were a reptilian race. I'm not telling you, this has been going on for generations. They're a reptilian race who looked humans. But if they caught themselves, a reptilian would show up. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> now there's something powerful. If you mix, <laughs> we're going to get strange here. If you mix uh, red and blue, you know what color it becomes? Purple. Purple. Now, when Trump's Spoke, what it was the uh, house or whatever his inauguration or not not presidential but when he just spoke at the house what? State, of state of the union that's it when when Trump spoke at the state of the union okay now remember that the people of Satan's kingdom are associated with purple they always try to imitate what things God. Look at, remember, what did Prince sing? What was his famous song? Purple what? Purple rain. Okay. The Democrats wore something. They wore a purple ribbon. If you notice, they wore a purple ribbon. And they also had a button. And you know what the button said? Time's up. You don't think they knew what they were doing? I'm telling you, America is so blinded to what is going on. 
They're living their life dilly-dallying, have no idea that these servants of darkness of Satan's kingdom is sitting right in front of us and nobody realizes anything. Do you know that um, the, the Republican train that was traveling to go for their resort, for their convention or whatever, there was a garbage truck that was put on the track when they hit it. Do you know that the name of that truck was Times? The name on that is Times. Why? Because they're trying to show them. Look at Times. Look at you. You keep coming at us. We're going to keep. Why? Because Trump. God is using Trump to expose more. You're seeing more killings and more things going on. Look at how many planes have crashed, and they don't understand how. I mean, again, go back to the incident of these people going, these kids going and killing and murdering one another, you know, when, and it can have been prevented, and they don't know, and, and it wasn't stopped. So what they're actually saying is they're coming King Apollyon. Time's up. We're his servants. You got to understand that they actually believe that they can destroy or overcome. They, they actually believe Satan is God and he's going to win. They're that warped. Now, I want to share something else. At the Super Bowl, right, when they were singing, does anybody watch the halftime Super Bowl? If you saw the halftime Super Bowl, it blow you away. Because this guy that's singing was also a Satan worshiper, and he was Prince's, I don't know, I guess, prototype. Yeah. Yeah, Prince mentored him, let's just say. And uh, so while he was singing, they had an image of Prince. And Prince turned into a devil with a tail and horns. And the song he was singing in a part of, of the song, which in Purple Rain, and he says, I will die for you. I will die for you. Now, check this out. So when he's singing, I will die for you, at that moment, at that second when he's singing that, the clock, you can see the clock because it was ticking down before the, the second beginning of the halftime. It's had the time on the clock was 10.42. Two Vs, 10.42, Satan's 42 months of rain. Now here's something else that's wild. Prince died on April 4th. I mean, on April 21st. Prince died on April 21st. April is the fourth month, right? The letter, the 21st letter in the alphabet is you. So when you turn this around, he's saying, I will die for you. Everything is associated and connected. Every time you look, if you see the demonic arena, they're always expressing a message. Does everybody understand? So he actually died on the day that he said, I will die for you. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Romans chapter 1. Now, wait a minute. Before we go there, you can go there. Um, I want to go back to the WWW, all right? Because it's the twin system. The day that they were putting the main beam on, right, on the world tower representing Apollyon, they were saying our king is coming, crowning it that day with a satanic emblem on, on the top floor. <coughs> Obama writes on the beam, we remember, first W, we rebuild, second W. We come back stronger, third W, representing what? Nephilim race. Does everybody understand that? Because he's a part of it. Does everybody get this? This is where we're at. We are the only resistance here. The body of Christ is the resistance and the exposure of everything that's going on. Romans, uh, what did I say, 1, verse 18.
I know this is a lot to uh, absorb, but praise God. Absorb it. <laughs> this is reality, amen? This is coming out of the fantasy system and world that we live in. That's ruled by Satan's kingdom. It's swayed under deception. It's all ruled by deception. But without the Holy Spirit, you won't outwit him. <laughs> Look at how many goofy religions there are out there. Romans 1, 18. Is everybody there? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because of what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? Excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of of the incorruptible God and to an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to what? Uncleanness and lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to what? Vile of passions. For even their women exchanged a natural use for what is against nature. This is where they became lesbian and everything else. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their laws for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error. Which was due. Remember, these are demons in individuals. A person's not a homosexual because he was born that way. These are demons in them. A person's not a transgender or lesbian or whatever. These are demons that are in them. And what, once that demon that leaves them, they begin to change. Amen. And even so, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them up over to debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteous sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Wow, so that means even if you approve of them, you will reap the same thing they will reap. Amen? <laughs> this is where we're at now. This is what the evil world, look at, they portray something totally different. They live in a life of what we call good and evil. But you and I are to be living a life of righteousness, which is different, totally different. And I'm going to close in Ephesians 2, verse 11. The bottomless pit. A lot revolved around the bottomless pit. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 11. Let's speak it. Verse 11. Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision made in the... That at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise 
have, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you once were far off, have been brought by, near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, who has also created himself, what? One new man from the what? Two. That's, in other words, for me and you, from the place of good and righteousness to now righteousness. Thus making peace and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole world being knit, being knit together grows in, a holy, in the holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for what? Dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Now I want to bring you to one last scripture, Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, so you can see the bottomless pit. <laughs> one, some. one, two. Okay, remember that God created it. He creates everything perfect. Nothing he creates is messed up. Amen. In verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Okay, then the earth was without form and void. All right. That means something happened between Genesis 1 and 2. That's where Lucifer exalted himself on the earth. God removed him, shut down the earth because it was chaotic. Amen? And then God decided to restore the earth. But there's something that happened here. In Genesis 2 it says, The earth was out form and void and darkness was on the what? Face of the deep. That is the pit. Does everybody get it? That's where God placed the pit. On the face of the what? Deep called the bottomless pit. And then the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And then there was light. Let there be means restore, not create. So God was restoring things again. But the bottomless pit was placed in Genesis chapter 2, known as the face of the deep. Everybody cool? You learn something? Get trained up? Keep your eyes and ears open to what's going on. Don't be sucked in. Amen? Don't be sucked in by garbage or by religion and all the other stuff. You stay connected with God's presence. It's important because in his presence is everything is revealed. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your word. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the revelation and impartation that was given to us be protected by your blood and grow and bear fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Stay dressed with the